In this video, we'll look at using a particle display mode which reveals the velocity of the particles. This is a good way of previewing what render time motion blur will look like. In our scene then, we have this very basic setup. It's just an emitter. And what it's doing, it's firing these particles from the square emitter towards our camera. So if we then look within this redshift scene camera and hit play, we've got particles coming towards us. Now, let's just put this up as if it was some kind of portal or speed of light travel. Um, we'll go to our emitter object tab. Let's change the emitter shape to a circle. And we've got it set to look ring only, which means it's only going to emit particles from this ring. Now, because we we know the perspective, we know these particles are coming um, towards us, we can kind of um, work out the intention of the scene. But if we had no idea these particles were coming towards us, it may just look like they're firing out um, from our... Um, uh, our ring emitter outwards and we can't really get an idea of visually what we're trying to achieve and also what the motion blur would look like so for example let's set up that motion blur in a quick render if we just hit render now in our render view we're getting our particles but it's not until we activate motion blur that we get this real effect that we're going for so let's go let's pause that go to our render render settings and in the redshift advanced settings we'll go to motion blur enable motion blur and let's just put it on the default movie settings so now if we render this in the uh, render view it's not going to work you can't use this mode but we can render it here and it will render to the ipr and look there is our motion blur and there we can start seeing this tunneling effect with our motion blur render but obviously it's not very efficient to be um, rendering motion blur to get an idea of how the scene is looking as we're building it so what is a better more efficient way of visualizing this type of motion blur effect well it's very simple there is a display mode that will do just this and it is really fast to draw and it works it's got a few different options as well so in our emitter let's go to our display tab and instead of um, um, displaying the default editor display mode of squares we have got the perfect mode to visualize what motion blur is going to look like in lines and the reason for that is this in its default settings the line length has this mode and by default look it's set to dependent on speed so it's effectively going to draw a longer line for particles that are moving faster and a shorter line for those that are moving slower so this is exactly going to reflect what the motion blur effect is going to look like so with our lines let's hit play and yes look we can see that all of a sudden in our viewport we're getting that visual tunneling effect we can see what it looks like we can make adjustments and we're getting this really nice kind of preview of what our motion blur effects are going to look like with this really fast to draw and calculate display mode and we want to keep it on this with the faster look let's just come out of the camera and if we just dolly in a bit you'll see that we've got some long lines here really fast moving particles we've got some shorter lines uh, for the slower moving particles that's cool uh, should you wish to make a change of that if you're not wanting to do this for motion blur effects you can just switch this off look you can either have it dependent on the particle radius so bigger particles will have longer lines or you can just have it fixed and then just designate what that fixed length line is uh, going to be so a few different options but i always use line mode dependent on speed whenever i'm setting up particle uh, scenes that uh, i'm going to be using motion blur on at render time because it gives me a really good visual clue as to how that simulation is going to look once that render motion blur has been applied